Ferry Road condo can buy or buy buy. Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Wee Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, you will be in for the treat. I'm going to bring you to explore some of the most beautiful properties along Ferry Road. Condos near Prime District 10 are known for their proximity to town, good school, and close proximity to Botanic Garden, which I love very much. I will only compare these 10 condos along this side of Ferrer Road. As you know, Holland is very big. I will cover the rest in my other videos. As usual, I will compare their performance for four years from 2019 to 2023. This is before and after COVID, so that we can have a sense of how much prices have appreciated during this time. Please note that most of the condos in this area have very low resale volume, so the data may not be very accurate. I have also averaged out some of the data. Please read the data with a pinch of salt. Before we commence, do you want to make a guess on which condominium will outperform and which will fare poorly? Here, pause this video for a while and think about it. Remember, not all condos perform the same. If you make the right choice, you will what all the way. Let's dive straight into Ferrer Road with the poorest performer first. Not surprisingly, the condo that fared the poorest is Poland and Blue. Are you surprised? It's located along Ferrer Drive off Ferrer Road. It's surrounded by older freehold condos. This is a GLS site that was sold in 2012. This is a small project with 106 units that TOP in 2016. Most of the units are small one and two bedrooms investment units. Apparently, there are only two profitable transactions with the latest one making 128,000 or 1.2% 1 annualized return. There are seven loss-making deals with some losing 224,000. <sighs> Why like that? I looked through the one, two, and three bedroom floor plans. They look pretty decent, similar to new homes today. The facilities are pretty limited, but that shouldn't be the reason for its poor performance. Otherwise, I think the 99 years tenure may play a part. Next on the list is Wilshire Residence. However, there are zero resale transactions so far, so it is not fair to compare its performance now. The third condo on our list is Gallup Gables. This is a 140 units freehold condo developed by Street Trading. For those that don't know Street Trading, they are a very low profile but global company in tin mining, property to hotels. It is led by the very influential woman, Miss Chiu Gek Kim, who always appear in a signature Chong Sam. If you are keen to find out more, you can watch this interview on Channel 8 with Tong Su Hua. It's a pretty nice show. I left the links in the description below. Anyway, my first rental transaction in my career took place in Gallup Gable way back in 2010. Back then, I was a very young agent. I took public bus to conduct viewing back then. What I love about Gallup Gables is the low-rise, colonial-star design and plenty of open space within the compound. It is situated on a long stretch of land with only the entrance visible from the outside. This means most of the units are hidden from public view and are very exclusive. In addition, the units are very spacious and are popular with both locals and expats. In terms of prices, I think today's prices still seem reasonable at 2000 plus per square feet. However, unit size are huge, so the overall quantum are higher. The next condo is a level. It is located next to the busy Ferrer Road. There are 126 units and TOP in 2004. Back in 2019, prices averaged 1006 per square feet. Today, it has appreciated close to 2000 per square feet or 24% after the pandemic. Not too bad in my opinion. Further down the road, we have Summerview Grandeur. Prices have increased by 27% to date. It is a freehold condo with 96 units. Location-wise, it's next to Ferrer Road MRT Station. It is sitting on a long curving piece of land with most units facing the quiet Ferrer Drive. It TOP in 1996, so it is about 27 years old. From the outside, it doesn't seem it look that old. I think it is very well maintained. This applies to ourselves. 
we must always maintain ourselves to be at the top of our game. Just eat well and exercise well. This will keep the doctor away. Similarly, at 27% return is Summer View Park. It's sitting on one of the largest freehold land in District 10. The land size is huge at 855,000 square feet. There are a total of 453 units spread across four tower blocks, walk-up apartments, and strata landed. Seriously, I love such old project. I find them to be very majestic and timeless. Many of the rented units are owned by owners staying in the nearby GCB or landed properties. This is truly another class on its own. Back to the newer waterfall garden, it did decently well at 30% return. This 132 units condo, TOP in 2010. This means it is 13 years old. Most of the units are huge. Just take a look at the floor plans spread across three tower blocks. Not too bad with full condo facilities. A typical three bedroom will cost close to four million, whereas a four bedroom will set you back by seven to eight million. Next, Gallup Gable is another condo that is relatively unknown to most. It's located hidden along Wellington Park, which is off Farrell Road. This 53 units condo TOP in 2002 and is about 21 years old. Take a look at the sizes. They are also scary huge. I mean, they are as good as any landed properties. If you can afford a house here, I believe you must be somebody. That is why a significant number of buyers here are PR or foreigners. They are not eligible to buy landed. Instead, they choose this condo as their home instead. Back along Ferrer Road, we have the Spanish village. This condo is always mentioned in the newspaper because they have attempted a few on block before. I think they are trying again now. This is another huge site with six blocks spread across 330,000 square feet of freehold land. A typical three bedroom that measure 1,600 square feet will set you back by 3 million or 2,001 per square feet, even E is 36 years old. I like the way E is designed with the apartments surrounding the common facilities. Solid concrete walls and balcony encapsulate individual apartments. This is what I call good, practical, old school design. Lastly, I didn't know about this condo called Wellington Park until today. It is situated next to Farrell Road MRT Station. It comprises four tower blocks that overlook the GCB area. There is no fence surrounding the estate. Amazing, right? In other country, you can't do that. The average price back in 2019 was 1,800 per square feet. There is no transaction in 2023. If there are any, I wouldn't be surprised if price will hit 2,002 per square feet at least. This is one of the finest condo in District 10 that I consider the equivalent of Ardmore Park. In conclusion, what can we learn from here? Firstly, New condos such as Poland and Blue underperform because units are small and it's on 99 years tenure. Most buyers living here will prefer freehold as far as possible. This is only my opinion. If you have others, you are welcome to share them with me. Secondly, merchant condos such as the Levels and Waterfall Gardens perform reasonable well due to their sizes and freehold tenure. Thirdly, Older condos all outperform after the pandemic, where buyers prefer bigger units for their own stay. Here, if you happen to stay in any of the old condos that I have referred to, I wouldn't mind dropping by your estate to take a look and limp copy with you. Lastly, how will we sure residents perform in the resale market? Will it make an exciting profit because it is going to TOP soon? Can the small unit mix appeal to a certain demographic of buyers? Here, I always wonder that if an on block does happen to some of the older condos, do we really need to tear down something so functional and practical? Can we conserve such homes that are designed by pioneer architects before us? Maybe property developers can explore doing A and A and subdividing each apartment into smaller units yet preserve the character of the development. In this way, they can save on construction costs and faster turn over time and sell them cheaper to the buyers. It's a win-win situation. Frankly, I wouldn't mind buying such. 
Here, we have this Green Plan 2030, led by the Ministry of Sustainability and the Environment. It mentioned sustainable living. Can more be done? And lastly, can URA look into our policy on conservation and redevelopment plans, especially on on block sites? I believe many Singaporeans like me will welcome such proposal. That's all. Thank you for watching. And I will do another video on the other side of Ferro Road that will cover the Leiden and others. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video around if you find it useful. Appreciate that. Thank you and see you soon.